Chapter three, of course, if you are talking about continuous delivery, we will need to be talking about like services, like so, so about pipelines and automating things. Because if you have been working with Kubernetes for some time, you know that in, in order to get some like an application written in Java, written in Go, written in other things in any other languages, in order to run that in Kubernetes, you need to containerize them, you need to write some YAML files. You need to move, you know, the container to the registry so the cluster can have access to it. And then finally, you can run the application. Then you need to create an ingress to expose it outside the cluster. There are tons of different things that you need to do, right? So in this chapter, I'm uh, talking about service pipelines and environment pipelines, two different concepts that I'm using to describe kind of like different kind of different type of automations for different things. Service pipelines, uh, as described here, basically are the pipelines that we will run every time that we make a change in, in one of our services. These service pipelines are usually in charge of, you know, cloning the, the source code from the repository, building the binaries from, from, from that source code that it's, uh, you know, building the service, running all the tests. Usually, depending on the, the tech stack that you're using, if you're using Java, it is quite common to build a jar file and then move that to a separate repository. If you're using, uh, you know, Node, you, I'm sure that you can create like an NPM package and also push to the repository as well. And then you start, you can containerize that, that binary uh, with the right dependencies, with the right like base uh, image layers to make sure that it runs. And when you have that, then you're going to push that container to a registry. So if you are in a remote Kubernetes cluster, that remote Kubernetes cluster can go and download that container in order to run it. Finally, you will write the Kubernetes YAML files and maybe like a Helm, a Helm chart or kind of like a package to distribute this configuration as well. And that can also be pushed to a repository. The service pipeline itself is not in charge of deploying the service itself. And that's why we have what I'm calling here like the environment pipeline. The environment pipeline concept is uh, an idea that follows quite close uh, the idea of GitOps, the idea of having a single source of, thru of truth uh, about how to deploy and how, how, how to deploy things into a Kubernetes cluster. Right? The idea here is that you have a Git repository that contains all the configurations uh, for creating an environment on top of a Kubernetes cluster, and you stop going to the Kubernetes cluster to interact with the resources manually. Right? So you have a repository that has all the configuration. And every time that you want to make a change, let's say that you want to deploy a new version of your service, you just go and change the Git repository configuration files. And then a pipeline gets triggered that it's going to basically sync that definition into a Kubernetes cluster. This comes with a lot of advantages because then you have the definition of what you want to have in an environment, let's say the staging environment or the production environment with all the configuration that it's needed to create an, that environment in a Git repository, that basically means that if for some reason that cluster goes away, like it completely disappears, you can create a new cluster and sync that state that it's represented in that Git repository by running a pipeline and you will have your environment back up and running. You can also revert changes. You know, if you updated a service and that service is causing some issues, the only thing you need to do in order to revert back to the previous state is just revert a commit here in, in, in the repository and then the pipeline will run again and it will sync to that state that we knew that it was working. So all these things are kind of like important. There are like tons of concepts. There are tons of tools implementing these, these kind of like approaches in some way or another. There are different tools out there in the CNCF uh, landscape that will give you some of these things uh, for free. In this chapter, I decided to talk about two things. First is Tecton, uh, which is uh, you know a pipeline engine for Kubernetes and that uh, project basically it's been built following Kubernetes best practices and it's pretty mature nowadays. It is not uh, a project that I would call like an end user ready project for you just to run pipelines more like what Jenkins was before. It is more like a toolbox of pieces like of, of different building blocks to build pipelines in general, right? So you can pick these and then build more and more complex pipelines and then share those with your developers. In this chapter, I have an example, again, a step-by-step -step tutorial uh, that we can go and, and take a look at. So uh, I think that I have the link here, yes. And basically in this tutorial, I guide you to install Tecton into a cluster and then install something that it's called the Tecton dashboard where you can just look at your builds and look at your pipelines running and then just run these pipelines, right? Like you can just build the services from the walking skeleton by just running these pipelines and parameterizing these pipelines. 
pipelines, as you can imagine, uh, are defined into uh, Kubernetes resources. So if you take a look at the service pipeline in this case, we'll do the steps that were described there in the image. For example, here you can see that the first task of this pipeline is to clone a repository. Uh, and it, it is using something, a bundle from Tekton, which are basically pre-built tasks uh, to how to clone things, right? Like it is a common task to clone things from Git in this case. And there is a task already provided in the Tekton catalog that allows you to clone any you know, arbitrary repository. In this case, we are even like sending the repository as a parameter. So whenever we instantiate the, this pipeline by creating a pipeline uh, run, we are going to send the parameters to, def to define which repository needs to be cloned and you know, move to the next step. As I mentioned before, these services are Java-based. So the next step is also a bundle. It's also like a reusable task that basically will allow me to build Java projects using Maven, a tool that is very common in the Java space. And after that, uh, we want to build a container image from the, the, the result, uh, from, from building the project, the jar file. In this case, we, we ended up with the jar file, and we want to build an image with that. And then the last step is to you know, uh, create a package and publish that package, like the helm, the helm chart in this case. So let's take a look at that. Let me try to run that for you. Um, it's kind of like cool. Uh, Tekton comes with the Tekton dashboard that allows you to see all these things in a more graphical way, because if not, you will need to deal with these YAML files. And this is what I meant by in Tekton, you have like all these building blocks, you have the bundles as well that you can be used, but it is pretty low level because at the end of the day, you are defining Kubernetes resources that you need to instantiate and, and handle manually. So there are tons of platforms that are being built on top of Tekton to simplify the user experience, kind of like a lot. But that's why I really like Tekton because Tekton gives you all those building blocks to build these more complex tools. On top. I installed Tekton and I deployed these pipelines that I was showing to you, like the service pipeline and the environment pipeline. And I've just deployed one pipeline that is in charge of building my service that it's called API Gateway. This is the user interface for the application. And you can use also a CLI tool that it's called TKN that will allow you to basically run that pipeline and create a new instance of that pipeline. There are some instructions here on how to set up, for example, in this case, the credentials for being able to push my uh, Docker container to my Docker Hub account. And for that, you need to create a Kubernetes secret with your credentials. So when you run the pipeline, the pipeline can push that container to that registry. If you have a private Helm chart repository, you will need to do something similar uh, to run that. So if I copy this command in here, uh, which is again using the Tekton CLI the, that you can install using Homebrew if you're in Mac or you can download the binary. Uh, what you can do here is uh, just create an instance for, for that pipeline. And you will notice that whenever I create a new instance for this pipeline that it's called API Gateway Service Pipeline, I will be creating some Kubernetes resources on, on the backend, right? Like it's going to be sending some Kubernetes resources and that's going to create a new instance of the pipeline will, which will execute all these steps that I was mentioning before. The first thing that it's, it's like, it's interactive in this case. So it, it is asking me uh, where the source code is uh, for running this pipeline instance. I can change that using parameters, but I will use that. Like the default option here, it, it also asks me the branch that I want to use. The context, like the path where the file is, where is the Docker file that I want to use to build the Docker container, uh, which repository, which uh, user do I want to use uh, in Docker Hub in this case, and what's the name of the container that I want to produce, and the version. In this case, is 0 0.1.0 dash test pipeline, right? And finally, if I want to set some parameters for Canico in this case, I don't want that. Uh, and there you go. So I have a pipeline now that it's running. Uh, it's going to build the source code that it's located in the main branch of that repository, and it's going to create the binaries, it's going to create the containers, it's going to push the containers, and it's going to finally create a Helm chart out of it. So I'm just tailing the logs now here, like Tekton gives you that command that allows you to see all the containers that are executing the different steps. This is pretty low level. Usually you wouldn't be looking at this unless you are kind of like trying to debug what's going on in the pipelines. That's why I think that using the Tekton dashboard makes a lot of sense. Uh, you can go here in the dashboard and take a look at the pipeline runs, and you can see these more like the things that you will look into into Jenkins. 
Uh, one thing that it's important to, to mention here is that Tekton, basically it's coordinating different containers for each step, for each task inside my pipeline. It's creating a different container inside Kubernetes that basically allows Tekton to scale up. So if you have tons of different uh, pipelines running at the same time, Kubernetes is doing the scheduling on when to, where to put in which kind of like hosting, which machine to put each of these containers and then moving that data around these containers in order to move to the next steps. You can see that I'm using Maven. That basically means that I'm downloading half of the internet with dependencies just to read that. And you can see also here, I don't know if that's maybe too small, uh, but also has like a React application. This is the, the, the user interface. So it's a Spring Boot application with a React application inside and it's building all that stuff and the build is going good. So at the end of the pipeline, as I mentioned, I should end up, you know, with the container, um, with the container in Docker Hub, and we can take a look at that later on when the pipeline finish. It's going to take some time, so I don't think that there is any point of waiting uh, for this to finish. You can believe me, or you can try it out yourself. If you set up and if you follow this tutorial, you will just be uh, getting all these steps uh, being run inside your Kubernetes cluster. I 100% recommend to do this. This can run in a, in a cloud provider. I'm running here in Google Cloud, but you can also run it on your local uh, machine if you install Tekton locally. And if you install, uh, you know, if you have something like Minikube or Kind with Tekton installed, you can run the same pipeline in there.